Hey, yo, what's good, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of your favorite MMA sports betting, picks, and predictions channel, Bros Talk MMA. I'm your host, Utica, undeniably the illest cat around, a.k.a. Mr. Make This Pick Real Quick, a.k.a. the Parlay Prince. I'm here with my bro host extraordinaire. You know what it is. It's Ray Bucks. It's Chico Jordan. It's... It was a rough card last week. Woo! Yes, indeed. You know, let's 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 not even talk about that, man. You know, we don't even need to put that into the air. I'll just let some graphics go right now. Everybody will know what the all-time picks is and where we're at. They didn't I'm really, still winning. They didn't drop too significantly not in at the all. direction, you know? So, hey. You know what I mean? The past is the past. We're here today to cover this weekend's Oh. pay-per-view card hey. players fuck up sometimes yeah you know they're gonna be in manchester this weekend we got a fight card we got two championships on the line we got the interim heavyweight title on the line between tom aspinall going up against fuck i forget who he's going up against oh, oh my god damn i can't believe i fucked that up all right tom aspinall no hold on hold on we got two titles on... Wait, what was that? We got the interim heavyweight title, Tom Aspinall going up against Curtis Blades. We got the welterweight title on the line. We got Leon Edwards going up against Bilal Muhammad. This is a 14-fight card, so we're going to start with the first one. All right, we're going to start off with our first fight of the night in the light heavyweight division. We got Modestus Bukowskis going up against Marcin Pracnio. We got Bukowskis coming in. They are 3-4 and four in the UFC, 15-6 and six overall, and 4-1 and one in their last five fights. They, uh, we got Pracnio coming in, 4-5 and five in the UFC, 17-7 and seven overall, and 3-2 and two in their last five fights. I'm going to be going with Bukowskis, uh, I believe probably by either decision or knockout. Um, they're going to be the younger, longer fighter. They're going to have the edge in the striking, in my opinion. Uh, should be a standing fight, but they definitely can grapple if it does go to the ground. And uh, I just feel like they face uh, stiffer competition. Uh, Procneo, they're going to be the older fighter by six years. And uh, they're dangerous. And uh, are going to throw volume, but they definitely can be chinned. Uh, I'm going to go with Bukowskis. I'm going to go with Bukowskis as well on this uh, particular fight. Um, I think he has the win over Pracnio. I'm going to say a whole uh, bunch about it. Um, other than the last five fights that uh, Bukows Bukowskis has uh, only lost one versus uh, Pracnio. Uh, having lost two in his last five. So that's where I'm at. All right. Moving on, we have a bantamweight bout. Or, oh, God damn, I forgot these are all fucking different. <laughs> all right, folks, moving on to the women's division. We got the straw weights going at it. We have Shauna Bannon going up against Alice Ardeline. Um, we got Bannon coming in 0 1 in the UFC. 5 and 1 overall and 4 and 1 in their last 5. We got Ardeline coming in. That's going to be their UFC debut. They're 9 and 5 overall and are currently on a 7 fight win streak. Um I'm going to be going with Bannon in this fight by decision. I just think uh with them being the younger longer fighter uh and having the edge in striking, they should be able to keep things standing and uh I feel like over the course of their career faced Stiffer competition, whereas Ardeline, um, they're definitely going to have the edge in the grappling and are more experienced than Bannon, but I just don't feel like they've really faced anybody in their career outside of, like, Whaley Zhang, and, I mean, of course, you know, Whaley made quick work of her uh, by submission, so, yeah, I'm going to be going with Bannon in this one. Bannon's the pick. Bannon's actually faced UFC competition. Uh, Arlene has not. Um, but these are two trash cans, uh, you know what I mean, smacking against each other. 
whatever. Ben is the pick. <laughs> All right, moving on to the heavyweight division. We got Mick Parkin going up against Lucas Bresky. Uh, we got Parkin coming in. They're 3-0 and in the UFC, 9-0 and overall. Um, we got Bresky coming in there, one and three in the UFC, nine four and one with a draw and one no contest. Um, and that would make them one three with that one no contest in their last five fights. I'm gonna be going with Parkin by decision or KO. Uh, I believe uh, that. They're going to have uh, the better striking, uh, the better gas tank. They are the younger fighter in this bout. Um, they got decent grappling to keep it on the feet. So uh, I think um, Bretzky, you know, they're just in a gatekeeper mode right now. This is kind of them just fraud checking, parking potentially. But I just don't think they're going to be the one. So, uh, yeah, I'll be going with parking in this fight. We're just looking at two husky boys. Of uh, getting after it, unfortunately, uh, I think this will probably be another decision uh, fight um, to f- f- thick dudes oh, so. rolling around, two uh, uh, heavyweight dudes rolling around, uh, a garbage fight. Uh, I mean, Par- Parkin wins. Um, but not by a lot. He's not gonna. I don't think there's gonna be any KOs, any submissions. It's gonna just be two very sweaty men Again. randomly throwing punches at a a terrible clip after like halfway into the first round, and it's just gonna finish out that way and like like, like two fucking turtles is what it's gonna look like <laughs> to me. So. Um, parking for the win, I guess. All right. <laughs> Moving on to the welterweight division, we got Sam Patterson going up against Kiefer Crosby. We got Patterson coming in one and one in the UFC, 11 2 and one draw overall, and uh, four and one in their last five fights. We got Crosby coming in there, 0 and one in the UFC. 10 and 4 overall and 2 and 3 in their last 5 fights. I'm going to be going with Patterson in this one by sub or KO. Um they're going to be the younger longer fighter in this bout. Um should have an edge in all aspects. Uh I mean uh, I think Crosby is a dangerous striker. Um somewhat of even kind of like a brawler they're going to be in, you know, Patterson's face. They're going to be the older fighter by 6 years though. Um, they have hands, but yeah, if this goes to the ground, Patterson's definitely going to, uh, dominate down there, but Patterson has some decent hands of his own. Um, I'll be going with him. Who you got? The only way that Crosby wins is if he pulls a Cosby and, uh, slips something into, uh, (laughs) Patterson's. Hopefully that doesn't happen. Um... Because Patterson's the future, and, and Patterson should win. Oh, Patterson's a younger guy, and uh, I'd hate for to see something like that happen. So, <laughs> uh, Patterson for the win. That's wild. All right. Uh, <laughs> moving on to the middleweight division, we got a bout between Christian Leroy Duncan going up against Gregory Rodriguez. We got Duncan coming in uh three and one in the UFC, ten and one overall, and four and one in their last five. We got Rodriguez, six and two in the UFC, fifteen and five overall, and four and one in their last five fights. I'm gonna be going with Rodriguez by either decision or KO. Um I just think that uh they're gonna be the more powerful striker. Um they're coming in on short notice, which is one of my only concerns. Uh, but they'll, they got the experience, um, they got a decent gas tank, um, and they'll have the edge and the grappling if this fight were to go to the ground. Um, Leroy Duncan, you know, they're definitely going to be the better striker and the longer fighter. Um, 
they got some decent grappling defense, but I just don't think it's going to be enough if this fight goes into uh, the third round. Uh, I believe at that point, you know, you're going to just see uh, Rodriguez start to pull away in some sort of fashion. Uh, but yeah, I'll be going with Rodriguez in this fight. Unfortunately, RoboCop is going to look like RoboCop and <laughs> RoboCop 2. Remember when he got like <laughs> fucking beat the fuck up? Like they were just like jabbing him and shit, yeah, just and fucking decapitated like, and shit. Just cata- yeah, all things. That's gonna be Gregory Rodriguez, uh, Christian Duncan. Um, much uh, not much younger, but three years younger is is a big day, big deal in uh in the fighting game. Uh, in addition to that, um, I just see that he's gonna be able to pick him apart. Uh, he's got the longer reach, um, similar in, in height, um, and he's fighting in front of the home crowd. I got to go with Christian uh, Duncan for sure in this one. All right, all right. Next up, we got oh, come on! a welterweight bout. We got Oban Elliott going up against Preston Parsons. We got Elliott coming in 1 and 0 in the UFC, 10 and 2 overall, and they are currently on a 6 fight win streak. We got Parsons coming in 2 and 2 in the UFC, 11 and 4 overall and 3 and 2 in their last 5 fights. I'm going to be going with Parsons by decision or sub in this uh fight. I just think that they're going to be the better grappler. Uh they may have the edge in striking as well, but um I just feel like they've faced better competition overall, whereas uh, Elliot, they're definitely well-rounded, but I'm just not sure if they've been tested yet. So I'm going to be going with Parsons in this one. Oban Elliot is uh, from the UK. He's from Wales. Uh, He's three years younger. Um, He hasn't lost his last five fights uh, versus Preston Parsons. He's lost... Two of his last five fights. I got to go with Obon Elliott on this one. Uh, I just think he's going to take the W dub. Okay. Moving on to the bantamweight division. Uh, we got Colin Logren going up against Jake Hadley. We got Logren 1-1 uh, one and one in the UFC, 9-1 and one overall, and 4-1 and one in their last five. We got Hadley coming in on short notice. They're two and three in the UFC, ten and three overall, and two and three in their last five. I'm gonna be going with Hadley by sub or decision. Um, they're gonna be the longer fighter in this bout. Uh, they're gonna have the edge in the grappling. They got decent enough hands, and uh, I would say that the the only concern in this fight is the cardio. Um. Logren, they're going to have the edge in the striking, uh, and they got decent grappling, and they their cardio is okay, but they definitely do tend to fade as the fight goes on. Uh, but, yeah, I'm going to be going with Hadley in this one. I just, I don't know. I got to go with Logren. Uh, because Hadley's going up a weight. He's going up 10 pounds. Like you said, it's a short notice fight. This is true. Um, and so that being said, he's got to fight at a heavier weight on short notice against uh Cal and Logren and uh they're both fighting out of you know I mean one fighting out of Ireland one fighting out of England they're both fighting for their home country in, in my opinion um both within a year of each other I don't see any reason why uh Logren doesn't win this one the dawn let's get it okay moving on to the women's division in the straw weights uh, we got Molly McCann going up against Bruna Brazil. We got McCann coming in seven and five in the UFC, fourteen and six overall, and they're gonna be three and two in their last five. We got Brazil coming in one and two in the UFC, nine four and one draw overall, and they are three and two in their last five fights. I'm gonna be going with McCann by either decision or sub. Um, I just think that, you know, they're the more experienced fighter, the grittier of the two fighters. Um, they're probably going to come out, test their grappling. Um, I think that they're always trying to, you know, like improve on weak points and they've 
definitely know that their grappling is a, a weak point of theirs that they've been actively working on. Um, so I just think with that and them being uh, in front of the home crowd, they're going to be definitely juiced up off of that. Brazil, they're a good competitor, but they're just not a killer in my opinion. Um, they just like to look mean. Um, they got okay hands and grappling, good, you know, decent gas tank. Um, but if this fight does start to go, you know, into the later rounds, um, in front of that, you know, uh, McCann, uh, crowd, I think that their confidence is going to start to wane and could be a concern. So yeah, I'll be going with McCann in this fight. Uh, McCann is not a can in this particular fight. Well, I'll tell you what, um, you're not gonna say cunt. she's not in most fights, but in this particular fight, she's not. Um, because um, her opponent lost to Loma Lukbumi, which is five one. We're talking about she was she fought a midget. She fought a like a hundred and fifteen pound midget. Oh, can't say midget. Uh, uh, uh little person. Whatever the fuck, you know what I mean. Um, it's unfortunate. Uh, she got her ass beat. So I don't see any reason why McCann doesn't take this uh, shit to the house. Um, McCann, in this fight, you're not a can. <laughs> All right, moving on to the featherweight division. We have Nathaniel Wood going up against Daniel Pineda. Oh, and we got Wood coming in. Pulse. Seven three in the <laughs> seven and three in the UFC. Uh, nineteen and six overall, and three and two in their last five. Uh, Pineda coming in five six in one no contest in the UFC, and twenty eight fifteen with that one no contest overall, and also two and two with that one no contest in their last five fights. I'm gonna be going with Wood Pulse. um by KO or sub. I just think uh they're the more well-rounded fighter. Um, they should have the edge in all aspects, but definitely Pineda's grappling will be a concern. Um, they're the younger fighter. And uh, yeah, I just think that this is kind of an alley-oop for them. Um, and as long as they don't make a mistake, they should be able to you know, pass this test with flying colors. So yeah, I'll be going with Wood in this fight. I think uh, Wood is going to drop it in Pineda's pit. Oh. <laughs> the, it's Pineda's name pit? is the, the pit, right? Like that's weird. Yeah. So that Wood's going to drop it in the pit. Pause again. That's, Catch the win. That's too much, bro. Okay. Uh, okay. Let me let me do it again. Um, Nathaniel, the prospect, Wood, was going to dig in to <laughs> Daniel Pineda's pit. Hey yo, what the fuck? <laughs> or Daniel, or was he Nathaniel, the prospect, Wood, is prospecting? Like you know what I mean, it's like some fucking uh, 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 mining shit, right? Sure. So he's gonna <laughs> mine. Daniel the Pit Pineda's fucking pit. Like, hey, I mean, no diddy, know. man. No All diddy. All I'm saying is, uh, I think, Wood yeah. Wins this one. <laughs> <clears throat> know what I'm saying? Big pause. Big pause. Big pause. Makes uh, sense, though, right? Sure. Going with uh, Nathaniel Wood, right? Now you would. All right. Good. Mad Wood. That's hey, we, yo. That's all we need to know. Uh, <laughs> moving on to the another featherweight bout. We got Arnold Allen going up against Giga Chikadze. Um, we got Allen coming in ten and two in the UFC, nineteen and three overall, and three and two in their last five fights. We got Chikadze coming in eight and one in the UFC, fifteen and three overall, and they're actually on a ten fight win streak currently. Uh, I'm gonna be going with. Allen in this fight though, um, by decision or KO, I just feel like uh, they're the more powerful striker. They're gonna have the edge and the grappling if it goes to the ground, and uh, they've just faced higher level competition, higher level competition over their career, especially here as of recent. Um, 
as well as just being the younger fighter. Uh, Chikadze is going to be older than them by five years. They're going to be the cleaner striker, but, um, you know, they're just not going to be that powerful. And uh, they got okay grappling, but, you know, I think that uh, Allen's going to have the edge once again. So, yeah, I'll be going with Allen in that one. Almighty oh, Allen versus the Ninja. Uh, yeah, Casey. Oh, God damn it! I guess I'm looking at it now. I'm re-looking at it. Um, and I think you're right, right? Like Arnold Allen has just faced better competition than Casey has. Mm-hmm. Uh, Casey lost to Calvin Qatar. Who knows who the fuck that is? Bruh. Does anybody don't make a fool of yourself by saying that? I'm that's saying it right top, now. That's a top ranked featherweight. You're I don't give a about. fuck how top ranked he is. What did he say? And then he lost, or then he won against Alex Harris. Right? That's tight, right? Like, good job on that. You know what I mean? But like, Alan Imov, uh, don't. Uh, you know what I'm talking about? I do. Um, and the mock. What? No, go ahead. <laughs> Arnold Allen is my pick on this one. Just cut all the other shit out. You know what I mean? Arnold Allen, that's my pick. <laughs> I'm not even going to say nothing because, like, you, you, you're fucking with me. I'm not doing anything. Whatever. <laughs> Moving on to the flyweight division. We got Muhammad Makayev going up against Manel Cop. We got Makayev. They are 6-0 in the UFC. 11-0 with one no contest overall. And then we got Cop coming in. 4-2 in the UFC. 19-6 overall. And 4-1 and in their last five fights. I'm going to be going with Cop in this fight by KO or decision. They're going to be the more dangerous striker. Um, the more experienced fighter. And uh, they got some decent ground defense. Definitely have faced, you know, better competition than Makayev. Makayev's going to be the younger fighter by seven years, uh, which is probably my only concern. Uh, They definitely are a dangerous grappler. And if uh, they're not exciting, you know, but they do know how to get the job done if necessary, but if they can't get their grappling going, then uh, it's going to be a long night on the feet for them. I'm going to go with Cop. Let me explain to you. Cop is a, a boring fucking fighter. One of the most boring. Liar! Yeah. No, he is, for sure. No, he is. Uh, I mean, decision. Decision. Uh, oh, he got a little KO. He got a little KO. And then another split decision. Uh, Cop is very, uh, I guess he has a high fight IQ, we'll say that, right? Um, I don't think he can um, hold on with Makayev's uh, wrestling ability. And then also, Makayev also has great um, ability to strike. So uh, I'm going with Muhammad. That's my guy. I'm going to run it. That's where you're going to get your bread. Listen to a winner. All righty. Listen to the winner. Moving on, we have a lightweight bout between Bobby Green going up against Patty Pimblett. We got Green coming in. They are 10, 13 and 10. One draw, one no contest in the UFC. 32-15 with that one draw and contest overall. And they're 3 and 2 in their last five fights. We got Pimblet coming in, 5-0 and in the UFC, 21-3 and overall, and they're currently on an 11-fight win streak. I'm going to be going with Green in this fight by decision or KO. They're going to be the more experienced fighter. Uh, they're definitely going to have the edge in the striking. Um, they faced, uh, you know, the who's who of uh, the lightweight division. Um... They're going to have some decent, you know, ground defense to keep it onto the feet. They're going to throw volume. Um, you know, that's just them being the older fighter, definitely, uh, you know, the more uh, weathered fighter, too, 
as well. Um, meaning that like their chin and their age are basically my concerns. But uh, we got Pimblet coming in. They're undefeated in the UFC. They're going to be the younger fighter by eight years. Uh, I'd say, you know, they're somewhat round, round, somewhat well-rounded. They got an okay gas tank, and they'll have the edge in the grappling department, but they're going to have to work hard to either take Bobby down or keep them down if they do get them there. And uh, I feel like this is going to be a fight where their cardio is going to be tested unless they're able to, like, clip Bobby and, you know, put them away early, you know, with some type of flash knockout. But uh, I'll be going with Green in this fight. Patty Pimblett has been beating the shit out of old people since he started fighting. Um, Tony Ferguson. Like, Tony Ferguson is a great fighter. Tony Ferguson was all like, yes, I, I trained with fucking... David Goggins and all that shit. Beat the fuck out of him. Beat the fuck out of Jared Gordon. Beat the fuck out of Jordan Levitt. Beat the fuck out of Rodrigo Vargas. Beat the fuck out of uh, Luigi fucking Bermini. Like, this is just another notch in the belt. Uh, pause that shit, but whatever. A notch in the belt for fucking Patty Pamela. He's gonna fucking smack Bobby Green in the mouth. Bobby Green is going to go ahead and take an owl. And Patty Pimble will just continue his way up the fucking ladder. Uh, that's what that is. Um, so, that's my pick. All right. Okay, folks. Moving on to the co-main event of the evening. We got the heavyweight interim title on the line. We got Tom Aspinall going up against Curtis Blades. Aspinall's coming in 7-1 and one in the UFC. 14 and 3 overall and 4 and 1 in their last 5 fights which with that that one loss in those last 5 uh is actually uh them injuring themselves during the fight against Curtis Blades. So who's to say if they wouldn't be, you know, 5 and 0 oh right now. But uh they're 4 and 1 uh, in their last 5 you got Blades coming in 13 and 4 with one no contest in the UFC. 18 and 4 with uh one no contest overall. And uh they're gonna be four and one in their last five fights. I'm gonna be going with Blades in this fight. Um that's probably not the popular take, but I just think that they're gonna win either by decision or KO. Uh they got good hands. Um Good wrestling that they don't really use often, but you know they definitely have it there. Um, and they're gonna they're, they could give Aspinall some real problems uh, in that first fight. They definitely showed that they weren't afraid of Aspinall. They were uh, willing to go uh, right at them in that last fight prior to the injury. And um, yeah, I think he could give them uh, problems if this fight ends up seeing its way into the late rounds. We got Aspinall. They're going to be a, a very well round, a very well rounded fighter. And I mean, I'll be honest, they should win. But I just think that uh, Blades is going to be a real test for them on the feet and the ground. And uh, I don't know. I just feel like Blades is going to pull this one out. This is what matters: is if Blades decides he wants to wrestle, Aspinall is cooked. If Blades decides he wants to fucking bang. With Aspinall, Aspinall is going to cook him. Aspinall has the heavier hands. Aspinall, I don't think he has the faster hands, but they are definitely the heavier hands. And he has also a little bit more durability, in my opinion, than Blades does. So that's where Aspinall wins. We'll see what happens. Aspinall's my pick. Curtis Blades could, all you got to do is listen to me, my guy. Fucking wrestle him. We'll see if he does it. He probably won't. They'll probably just stand and bang. And then all of a sudden, Aspinall, bow, bow, gives him the fucking business. And uh, that's my pick. Aspinall takes the game. Okay. Okay. All right, folks. Moving on to the main event of the evening. Sure. We got the welterweight championship on the line. We got Leon Edwards going up against Bilal Muhammad. Uh, we got Leon Edwards coming in 14-2 with one no contest in the UFC. 
22 and 3 with that one no contest overall. And they are currently on a 12 fight win streak. We got Muhammad coming in. They are 14 and 3 with one no contest in the UFC. 23 and 3 with one no contest overall. And they are currently on a nine fight win streak. I'm going to be going with the champion. I'm going to be honest, I was literally going with Muhammad almost from the moment that they announced the fight. But after really looking into things, checking out, you know, the little bit of footage that I had from their last fight and just, you know, doing my research, I had no choice but to go with Edwards. I believe they're going to get this one done by KO or decision. Um... They look great in that first fight, like I had mentioned earlier. Um, they're a very well-rounded fighter. They're going to be the younger fighter by four years in this bout. Um, they got the edge and the striking and power also. Um, they got great grappling defense. Um, they're going to be the longer fighter of the two. And they're not exciting, but they do know how to win, so... Uh, you got Muhammad, who uh, definitely was losing that fight prior to the eye poke. Um, this was a, a while back, though, so I do feel like Muhammad's made leaps and bounds since then. Um, they should have an edge in the grappling if they're able to actually, like, apply their game. Um, I just saw Edwards, you know, defuse Usman, which I, I was pretty impressed by. Um, I know that Muhammad may be... Uh, a level, you know, above Usman in the grappling. Who's to say? Um, but they uh they're gonna have a great gas tank. They're gonna keep coming at uh Edwards the entire fight. Um, but I just don't think they're as strong or powerful as Edwards. And the more Edwards starts laying into Muhammad, if they're not, if he's not able to make this a grappling, you know, bout, then uh, Edwards is uh gonna start, you know. Those those uh strikes are gonna start taking their toll. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna be going with Edwards. Bilal Muhammad's going to win this fight because Bilal Muhammad is a wrestler. Bilal Muhammad is far better of a wrestler than uh, Leon Edwards. Leon Edwards does have crazy striking if he's able to implement it. I think that Bilal Muhammad will be on top of him. Who will be? very aggressive and like hold him against the cage and then get him taken down and as he does that at some point he will get them into a submission and then Bilal Muhammad will submit the fuck out of Leon Edwards and I'm going to say he's going to do it in the third round that's what's going to happen Bilal Muhammad for the fucking win that's where we're at all right all right that concludes our picks predictions uh pred <laughs> Picks and predictions portion of this show. Uh, real quick with the parlays. Uh, I got a, you know, base three parlay. And then I got a couple of spices on that. So uh, my three-piece parlay for this bout or for this card is going to be uh, Mick Parkin, Sam Patterson, and Nathaniel Wood. If you want to go for a spicy Looking four, spicy. you can uh, put McCann on top of that. And if you want a super spicy five, then you can put Edwards on top of that as well. You got any parlays? I got a three pick and I got a spicy four. Okay. And this is, I'm gonna call this the 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 uh the guaranteed the guaranteed three. You know what I mean? It's okay. the uh Wood Allen Duncan. Oh wait wait wait. Sorry sorry sorry. Uh McCann Wood Allen. Parlay. That's a that's a three pick. That's how like you know what I mean? Throw some bucks at it. Cover your cover what everything else you do, right? But then after that, I just I was thinking about it. Pimblet is your spicy four and Pimblet is the one that makes it a little bit better. So I'm not terrible on my parlays. Like last fight, a little bit. Fight before that, hit the three four. This one here. Three, four, boom, boom, run it again. You know what I mean? Mm hmm So, McCann, Wood, Allen, Spicy Pimblet. 
<laughs> no daddy. You know what it is, my guy. <laughs> <Go. laughs> All right, folks. Well, want to thank everybody for watching. Um, we're that much closer to our subscriber count hitting that 50 mark so that way we can go ahead and start doing uh live streams and watch alongs from the channel you know provide y'all with a little bit more content uh so you know make sure that you like subscribe comment share the channel um also um make sure that you follow us on ig at bros talk mma you can follow my bro here at r1.mason and you can follow me at utica underscore sme shout out one time to voyage denver and the whole team over there they did a write-up on our podcast which is super dope that's live now so you can check out voyagedenver.com and uh, they'll have the article up there or you can click into the description and we'll have the link available for you to check it out. Um, yeah. What about the uh, the other little shit? Uh, TikTok, that shit? Yeah, yeah. Oh, damn. Make sure that you follow us on Bros Talk <laughs> MMA on TikTok. Uh, it's mostly just our funny clips, but we will, you know, post other things like prop, you know, most likely that uh, our, our write-up and stuff like that but uh mostly it's just gonna be all the funny uh clips from this show all the crazy shit that this fool says fucking wiling out but um yeah just you know make sure that you check us out at bros talk mma on tiktok um and yeah i think that that's about it I do have a show coming up. I'll have more details about that for anybody in the Denver area that checks us out. August 9th? Yes. August, a Friday. Who's the Friday uh, who's the artist? Uh, you know what? Be headlining. I'll, I'll 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 save that for later. I'll I'll, I'll save that down the line. But uh yeah, I'm definitely I'm gonna be opening up for a household name of sorts. Uh but yeah. Keep on the lookout for that, but with all that being said, um, this has been another episode of your favorite MMA sports betting picks and predictions channel, Bros Talk MMA. I'm your host, Utica, undeniably the illest cat around, a.k.a. Mr. Make This Pick Real Quick, a.k.a. the Parlay Prince. I'm here with my bro host extraordinaire. You know what it is. It's Ray Bucks. It's Chico Jordan. It is the fucking parlay god. It is the black Nostradamus, the black king. Y'all know what it is. Mr. Give we me had my... a Oh, Mr. Give me my belt. Hand me my crown. Y'all know what it is. You know what I mean? Players fuck up sometimes too. You know what I mean? That last one, it's in the past. Does no one know? Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> yes, sir. Well, folks, until the next one, happy betting, best of luck, and until then, we out.